What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Blender tutorial for you. So continuing on top of our uh, video from last week where I talked about my new Blender channel, in this video I wanted to talk about some different ways that you can export your SketchUp models to Blender. Um, so this can be very useful for doing things like UV mapping and working with your materials or just creating renderings using Blender's free render engine. So being able to work together in this way is one of the ways that we can incorporate Blender into our 3D workflow with SketchUp. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so some of you may remember that I talked last week about my new Blender channel where I'm going to be teaching Blender tutorials. So um, I will link to that channel in the notes down below if you're interested in more information on this. I'm doing some beginner tutorials for modeling, but also for rendering, which I think is going to be really important for uh, SketchUp users who want to use Blender for rendering. So again, I will link to that in the notes down below. That channel is The CG Essentials. So the first thing I want to note is we are using the Pro Exporter. So this is SketchUp Pro. And so the only way that I'm aware of, and I haven't, I guess, looked into it too much with the online version, but the only way that I'm aware of to export these is to use the Pro version. Now, I will note if you have the Make version, there is a free way to export your models to a format that you can import into Blender that we'll talk about in a minute. But to start off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the 3D warehouse and I'm just going to download a model. So we're just going to scroll down and at least on my list here, I've got a alias teak chair that I'm going to go ahead and download and we can take that into Blender. And so what we're going to do is we're going to click on download. We're just going to say yes and bring that into our model. And so once we do that, we're just going to click right here in order to place it. Um, so that we have it ready to export. I'm gonna go ahead and erase out my default model and we should be good to go. And so the first thing to note about this is there are a couple different formats that you can export this to. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to File, Export, and we're gonna go to 3D Model. And so when we go to 3D Model, and so we're gonna go into the folder that we wanna export this to. And now let's take a look at our export options. So if you click on the drop down right here, and uh, I think a lot of these are only contained inside of the pro version, but if you look down here, there's a number of different options and the two we want to focus on are we want to focus on the Collada file and the OBJ file. And I think I want to start with the OBJ file. And so what we can do is we can export our model to an OBJ file and then bring it into Blender. And so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to call this chair underscore OBJ. And note that when you're exporting your file, there's a number of different options in here. So there's options for exporting your current selection, exporting edges, two-sided faces, all of that stuff. I'm not going to worry too much about these for right now, but we do want to make sure to check the box for export texture maps. And um, I usually check the box for swap YZ coordinates because otherwise your model might come in sideways. Um, that seems to vary depending on what your axes are. And then for units, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to type in feet and click on OK. And then we can go ahead and we can click on export. And so what this is going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to export this model to an OBJ file. And so we're going to let that work and then we'll take a look at what it does. And so you can see how it tells us what was processed when it does this. So the different materials, the different entities, it gives us information on all of that. We're going to go ahead and click on OK. And now let's take a look at that folder and what this created. So if you look in here, this created three things. So it created an OBJ file, which is your model file. It also created a material file which contains your material information as well as a folder containing all of the materials that are referenced in this model. And so if we were to look at these um, by looking at them as, um, as large icons, you can see that these are all in here as the different materials that were on the different faces inside of our model. So this basically packaged them all up and put them in a folder so that our 3D modeling program can reference them. So we're going to go ahead and close this. Let's go ahead and open up Blender. And so in Blender, I'm currently running version 2.82. So if you're in a different version, this may look a little bit different. But let's go ahead and let's open up a general file. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete out my default model um, just so it's not in the way. And so what I want to do is I want to come over here under File. And I want to click on the button for Import. 
and you can see how when we click on the button for import we have options in here for different kinds of files that we can import so there's all different kinds in here there's DAE which we'll talk about in a little bit that's the Collada file or the OBJ file and so the OBJ file is the one we want so we're gonna go ahead and click on this and then we're gonna open up our folder for our export and we're gonna find the OBJ file so that's our actual model file and we're just gonna double click on it so when we do that, what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring this model file in. And the first thing you're gonna notice is it usually comes in too big. So usually what you end up having to do is just tap the S key in order to scale that down. And then you just scale it down to a more manageable size or a more accurate size, just like this. Um, and if you really want to, you can uh, measure this to make sure you get it exactly right. I'm not super worried about getting it exactly right. Um, and that is one thing about Blender is a lot of the time you just kind of have to get things close. Um, there are ways to get it more precise than that, but it just... It's not really built for those like super architectural um, detailed measurement type modeling as much as getting this in here, getting it close to what it would be and just dropping it in your model. But the first thing I wanna look at though is how this brings this in. And so with the OBJ file, what you're gonna notice is this brings this into our scene collection over here. Um, and you can see how what this does is this just brings in the materials and then it also just brings in the actual raw geometry of this object. So if I was to click on this object and go into edit mode, so that's the mode where we actually edit the geometry of the object. Notice that this is in here and all of the different parts and pieces are in here as a single group, right? Like these aren't getting brought in here as separate groups. So if you had your arms in here as separate groups inside of SketchUp, if you use the OBJ method, you're not going to get those as separate groups inside of your model. And so this is a really good way to just quickly bring things in, especially if they're pre-textured or something like that. Um, if you just want to render something or something like that, this is an easy way to do that. So the OBJ is an easy way to bring in a model as long as you're not going to create a bunch of edits and as long as you don't need to maintain your model hierarchy. And real quick, I'm going to show you another way to do this that's free. So you don't need the pro exporters. So if you have SketchUp free 2017 or earlier, um, you can use this extension. Now I will know I am not sure how backwards compatible this extension is. So it should work in 2017. I don't know if it'll work in the earlier versions or not. But quad face tools from TomTom, which is a free extension, actually has an OBJ exporter. So this is quad face tools if you remember this is Tom Tom's suite of tools for working with quads well um, if you go down into your I believe it's the tools section under quad face tools what you're gonna find is not only does this have tools in here to work with quads there's also an option to export to OBJ format so you don't need pro exporters if you just want to do an OBJ export you can just go down and do an export right here and I leave instances as groups. Um, I check the box for export texture maps and then I swap the YZ coordinates and I click on accept. And from there you can just export this in the same way. So you can do a chair underscore OBJ and I'll just do a TT for TomTom. Tom. And it's gonna tell you that it exported this file to that folder. And so if I wanted to, I could now come into Blender, import that and find my TomTom Tom object right here, make sure it's the OBJ, not the MTL. And you can see how that'll also bring your chair in. And you may still have to scale this chair down. And uh, you can see how the scale was even more off on that one. That might have been because I didn't do anything with the units. But you can see how you can bring the same thing in for free using TomTom's tool if you have that make version. And so one of the things to be aware of with this though is you can't do anything really with the materials or anything like that. Um, I mean, you, you can, you could go into your UV editing and just kind of select everything in an object, but you can see how it is a mess, like a giant mess. And the only thing you can really do is you can just select everything by tapping A and then scale it. So if we were to look at our material over here, and you scaled everything, you could make your, your uh, material bigger or smaller. Um, 
by selecting everything and moving it around, but you're never going to get something like this cleaned up. Um, it's just too much of a mess. It's not modeled with quads or anything like that, and so it gets really difficult in order to do that. Um, what you really need is you need these broken up into the individual groups so they're more manageable. And so the way that we're going to do that is instead of importing an OBJ file, you can import a DAE file. So that's going to be the Collada file that we talked about a minute ago. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to export this again, but to a Collada file. And one thing I want to note about this is when you first do this, um, it's easy to go up here, do a file, export, 3D model, and then we're just going to select a Collada. And we'll just call this chair underscore Collada 1. Um, if you look at your options, there's a different set of options than there were for the OBJ file. So um, like triangulating faces and all of that. Usually I check the box for pre preserve component hierarchies. These others I don't really mess with, um, at least for right now. Um, and I'm going to export my texture maps and click on OK. But the problem is the way that this is grouped right now, everything's just in one big group gives you an error. And so what happens is if I export this to a Collada file like this, and then I go into Blender and I try to import it. So if I do a file, import Collada. If I find my Collada file and try to import it, it just kind of brings in like this one arm right here and no other geometry. So if you look at this, you can see how it brings in a whole bunch of stuff, but you can't really see it in here. So nothing really gets brought in in the right way. So, and the reason for that is because that file that we were working with, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this back out because we don't need it. Um, the problem right now, is it doesn't like it when you export a Collada file with everything in a group. And so what that means is you don't want to take this group right here and export this. Um, you can see how this has a whole bunch of other parts and pieces in it. What it wants you to do instead is it wants you to right click in here and explode this. So that this model has all of these different parts in here. So instead of having everything in one big group, if you explode that, so all the different parts and pieces are just in here on the first level and then export it, you're gonna get a better result. So now if I do a file, export 3D model, we'll call this chair Collada 2 keep those same settings and export this, you're gonna notice that now it's exporting a lot more stuff. So that stuff that gets exported can now be imported over here. So we're just gonna to go to File, Import, Collada. We're gonna find our chair, Collada 2. We're gonna import that. And so when we bring that in, you're gonna notice that we get our model inside of SketchUp. I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down for right now. We'll move it a little bit. One thing I'm going to do is I've got all these dotted lines in here. Probably the easiest way to get these to go away is to just go up into your viewport overlays and turn off your relationship lines for right now. So I don't want to get too far into getting rid of those and all of that in this video. But notice what we have in here is where before um, these got brought in as an individual object that you couldn't select individually. Well now you can select all of these individually. So they get brought in as different groups or individual groups inside of Blender. So you can see how you can select those individually. Well, you can also select each one of these and go into UV editing mode and select them. And you can edit each one of these individually. So, and I haven't unwrapped these or anything like that, um, but you could still come in here and select these individually and you could scale them up and down or you could move them in order to adjust the way that your material sits on these objects. So if you need something where you need to edit everything individually with the different parts and pieces, go with the Collada file. So the Collada file, again, it's gonna do very much the same thing in the sense that you get a Collada file and a folder full of materials, but you can see how you can now bring that in and um, you can edit the different parts and pieces. So that also makes it easy, for example, if you wanted to come in and apply a different material to your legs, you can see how because these are different objects, I could go into edit mode and select them all. And I could apply a new material to these. So I could make a new material, make our base color kind of gray. And we'll say that these are going to be metallic like this. So you can see how applying different materials to this 
is really easy as well. And then from there you could come in here and you could render this or there's different animation things you could do, but this is a good way to export your objects from the desktop version of SketchUp and bring them into Blender. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you'd like to see in this series, what you'd like to be able to do with your SketchUp models inside of Blender. So I'm considering trying to figure out an easy way for SketchUp users to just bring their models into Blender and just render them without having to make a whole lot of changes. But I'd love to hear from you guys on what you'd like to hear in this series. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.